Hey guys, it's Postbox Pat and welcome back to a new video and today I'm going to be telling you guys how to win every time on solo from Tilted Towers. Now in this gameplay it's going to be based around Tilted Towers but you could apply this to any area on the map but we're really going to be focusing mainly on Tilted Towers and how I managed to win a bunch of different games from Tilted Towers and this is probably my best one I actually had which actually ended up ending in Tilted Towers but you could apply this to any situation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump a little bit late for Tilted Towers and this is just an accident. I sh probably should have jumped a little bit earlier but it was coming down at a weird angle more of kind of a uh, northeast type angle which really wasn't too good for tilted towers but it gave it kind of the ability to actually have a low player count in tilted towers if you don't know the bus near enough 75 percent of the time will always go over tilted towers or loot lakes so most people are always going to dive to tilted towers and that's why it's probably the most popular location on the map still with the update being out almost a week and a bit now so that's pretty cool and it is really awesome to see people drop in here and this ton number of people and this was this video was actually probably from when the update first come out i think it was like the second day or something so we're going to be having a lot of like action and a lot of gunshots coming from all different angles and when it comes down to tilted towers you want to pick a location that you really like to go to now for example i like to go to this building sometimes i'll land on top if no one's got there before me or sometimes i'll land on the bottom part of it on the balcony or sometimes i'll even land right at the very bottom on the ground floor and loot around there so there's this guy in here drinking his potion i could hear that using my sound and i managed to get in there and kill him off so sound on this is going to be very killing uh <laughs> very key in tilted towers so i'm going to speed up the gameplay but you guys will still be able to hear the audio a little bit just reduced a little bit because it is going to be a little muffly but you have to listen to out well you've got to listen out to footsteps all the time in tilted towers now a headset is going to really help you guys out if you're landing in tilted towers because you're going to be able to hear people are below you above you if they're building up to you and stuff but if you're not using a headset i recommend getting your tv volume quite loud not loud enough to wake people up in your house if you're playing late at night but if you're got a free house or you're on your own or i don't know if you're in a situation where you can turn up the volume to full blast do it and you guys will probably have well not full blast but turn up to a good amount of volume so you can here around you you probably got a better chance because i play with quite high volume on my tv remote i play with like 24 volume obviously if you're using headphones this isn't the case and if you're on a pc you'll probably be using headphones as well most likely it all depends on the situation but in this situation here i just always go to the roof camp out on the roof a little bit build take cover behind here snipe at these people with the scar and this is something you can always do until it towers you can get a nice position and shoot people from distance always build on the roof sometimes if they take your cover out and keep listening out for someone down below you you have to be really careful because people are always going to be down below you and they're going to be trying to build up to you very often and you've just got to keep that awareness on until it towers at all times and sometimes you've got to sit back and wait rather than engaging now in this situation here i couldn't hear anyone down below me so i thought i'd just keep shooting at these now unfortunately i didn't manage to kill either of them they've actually killed each other but i got a lot of shots off so that's why i'm speeding up the gameplay quite a lot in this bit because there's a bunch of different people sieging here and i must have got so much player damage i was tempted to shoot at him but i thought no i can hear footsteps and as i start to hear footsteps i know that someone's creeping up as you can see i could see someone there so i dropped down try and hunt for them unfortunately i don't see them i dropped down and went in for the rush but i didn't manage to see them so sometimes dropping down and going in for the rush isn't a good idea and there he was behind the toilet i saw him he didn't see me so well he did see me but i got out just in time before he shot me and there we are a nice little swift kill there around the pillar so that's something you got to be careful for if you're going to rush people sometimes what i did then was an absolute awful mistake and most of the time i wouldn't do that i think in that situation i just thought i've got a good chance because this guy doesn't really know how to get up he's kind of i heard the door go i'm kind of i've got a good situation and a good position to be able to push someone like that in that position now if he would have got a shot off of me especially if he hit me in the head i most likely probably would have died and he would have got the kill and i would be out of the game so in that situation there it's up to you guys if you want to play aggressive or not and that's a situation you have to decide on the day or whatever you're playing so again i'm suppressing over here another guy i must have suppressed at least four or five people in this building throughout the entire gameplay and they just get hit markers after hit markers after hit markers different people are consistently attacking that building it's probably one of the main buildings to attack because it has got some of the big loot in it's got the biggest height it's probably got the best advantage for tilted towers so this is a risky move sometimes because if someone shoots your platform you will die but if you manage to get it right you can get across nice and easily and build up very easily to this section and go around the side like i'm doing get your shotgun ready because you're probably going to come into a fight in here i drop in i see the guy straight there he knows i was coming because he could hear me running up the wood i managed to get a few hits off at him i'm missing a few shots but he's also missing the jumping's really putting him off and i get a nice little swift kill in there very easily done and probably one of the best kills shotgun kills i've had in a while just getting that jumping ability making it confusing for the opponent now one little tip i do have a video coming out tomorrow about potions it's probably already out if you're watching this video at a later date talking about which order to use your potions and stuff 
To be honest, the best thing to do is always drink your mini potions even if you haven't fully healed up. If you're outside the storm and you in or you're in if you're inside the storm and not outside the radius of the circle, you've got a good chance. Just use your mini shields first because it's gonna it's the quickest way of recovering health. Now I'm gonna be doing a video talking about exa exactly all of the potion abilities, which ones to use first, which ones not to use, which ones are the best to use first, and stuff like that, which order to use them, because there's a bunch of people out there who don't 100% understand all that, I do have a video on that, which will be on screen right now, so go and check that out if you haven't already, it's out tomorrow, or it's probably already out right now, and it's a really awesome video. So, in this situation now, I'm kind of in a position where I've got near enough the entire of Tilted Towers in my sight. Now that hill over there is a dangerous hill, and the problem with building like this on Tilted Towers, you've got all the hills around you. I can see a bunch of players, but I ain't the sort of, even with 49 sniper bullets, I ain't the sort of player to start suppressing people at distance. Now this guy building over here, I was surprised that sniper shot that I shot didn't hit. Maybe it just wasn't high enough, or maybe it went through his legs. I sped up the gameplay a little bit here because I didn't think it was a necessary scene to add into the footage. It is an awesome and interesting scene, but having like suppressive fire from a sniper, it really doesn't need to be shown too much i don't hit the guy at all i don't think it's just hit markers consistently so it's a risky situation and i even put some windows on as well to try and get some peak shots but i just don't seem to get the angle and i just can't seem to get the angle i'm trying to do the glitch that i usually do where you get a nice little view changing the angle and stuff trying to get it perfect but i don't actually manage to get the kill here and i think this is just sort of me just kind of suppressing out when this is going on you have to really listen closely to the surroundings around you for example i start hearing rockets coming towards me and i see them being fired there very risky and very difficult to do one thing that was mainly key for this gameplay for me is the sound was actually quite low for me if i remember playing the gameplay is in the volume so i didn't 100 percent pay attention to the volume but obviously i have it in the back of my head so i know exactly when something like that's happening when the rockets and stuff are coming in so it was a nice little smooth little move there for me to be able to defend against that rocket attack because that could have been the end of my game so running on three kills and we're actually quite deep into the gameplay with only 15 players left is quite impressive but there's a bunch more kills to come guys so get ready for that so we're going around and building up to buildings collecting potions trying to get our potion up to 100 checking around making sure no one's around when you've eliminated the players or you've managed to wait out for these players to go down to low numbers you know that most people are going to be cutting in around tilted towers now due to the circle ending on here now this gameplay specifies staying in one area which this situation can happen many many times sometimes it doesn't happen sometimes it can happen in any area and sometimes when you've got this happening to you it's better not to push people it's better just to wait patiently pick a room pick a house or something defend that location and use that location to bait people in that will be a lot better most of the time unless you're a super aggressive player and you've got a really really good chance of getting some easy kills out there then i will definitely definitely think that you guys should probably play more of an aggressive style in fortnite battle royale i think aggressive aggression is quite key in certain elements for example here now i knew i'd have a good chance of getting this kill so i break down the barrier or the wall so i can get some nice shots off with my scar unfortunately the guy takes cover behind the car and then with me having my rocket launcher as my secondary I know that the explosive damage is going to do it like an area effect type thing and I was most likely going to get the kill in that situation. So I had the ability to be able to destroy that wall and take that for an advantage. Now when it's coming to picking guns and stuff like that, it's just a question I get quite a lot. I personally go for explosive weapons for that reason, being having that extra effect if they're in cover you can explode like go around the court like cover and stuff. But I know a lot of people would take like other weapons over the explosive weapon. For example, if there was a sniper and a rocket and I only had one slot, depending on the situation and the area I'm in, there's near enough a 90% chance that I'm going to take the rocket launcher over a bolt action sniper, even if I didn't already have either of them weapons. So I think it's something that you just got to consider for yourself, what style of play you play. Personally, I prefer to use explosive weapons over snipers. Yes, there's more skill involved in using the snipers and... I wouldn't say I'm an amazing sniper, but I can hit good shots, and I have done in the past several times. But with the sniper, I've mentioned this in a previous video. Oh, here's a kill coming up here again with the rocket launcher. Nice little smooth explosive damage. Explode. You can see how the explosive damage is very useful. It's almost like using a shotgun but with a slower reload time. So, But like I was saying, something in the past that I've mentioned on a video, which people have agreed with in the past, is the idea of Battlefield. Battlefield was a great sniping game, and that's what makes me struggle with Fortnite sniping, because I just can't seem to judge the distance correctly at long distance sniping due to battlefield one having me a little bit confused of it so here i'm just patching up the building you can see i've been camping in this building for a while and the personally why i chose this building was because one it's very quiet two it's very very close to the circle and it's near enough the last building until the towers on the edge so picking something like this is very key and can really help the game and turn the game turn the pages of the game for yourself and others around you it is definitely interesting so 
Again, I'm taking the sniper over. I'm picking a med three medkits over a sniper. Looking at the map and looking how it's ending, I was thinking possibly I'm not going to need a sniper. I have a scar and a rocket, two my two favorite weapons in the game. Why am I going to need a sniper? And here I'm just trapping up a bunch of stuff. I wasn't too sure why I was putting some traps down or just even like thinking about it putting them down. I didn't actually put many of them down, but. The, as you can see, there's only 27 seconds left. I think I'm just covering my back in case someone does try and push through this area. So I've got a good position and I've trapped the area. I've still got two trap spikes left. I know I picked up a campfire before and now I know I can possibly push out towards the enemies knowing that they're all going to be to my, I think that'll be to my north roughly maybe. Is it going to be to my north? Oh, it's going to be to my west-ish. So my like north, the west-ish type area, they're all going to be around there probably. So that's where I've got to kind of consider heading towards and knowing exactly how to make that move there. With the circle going in very slow, I know I've got a bunch of time. I can take my time with it. I just got to see where enemies are. I can't see anything. I can hear a few things like shots going off there and then in the background throughout this gameplay, especially in this situation where there's only seven people people left but the circle is getting very small or there was eight but one's just been killed so it's going to be interesting to see how I can react to this and be able to take in all the information that's going on with the circle changing now and completely going out of Tilted Towers to the road path, I've really got to consider how do I get out of this building. So I simply just build a stairs, break the piece. That could be a very risky move because anyone could see where you are. Same with doing that, that can be very risky as well. Someone could shoot that down and you could take tons of fall damage and possibly then be killed off by an AR or a sniper or something. But here I'm picking a position where I'm building inside the circle and I always put like my uh, wood down there at the bottom just to make sure no one's going to destroy the building because obviously the building's being held up by the metal, not the wood. And sometimes that gives it the extra support as well if someone's trying to shoot you underneath say if you fell inside your building you've got a better chance so where i am right now is a position where i can view over the entire map more of like a bird's eye type view something that can come in really handy if you need to know exactly where your players are i think building one by one structures like this that are about three to four tall is a very good advantage you're always going to have height on people especially if you do it on a hill and if you want to go higher you can but please note you will take fall damage my favorite height is usually free because you don't actually take any fall damage onto a flat from that from what i know in the past but however building a two or a one they are awesome, but they can be easily sieged. The threes are really awesome to be able to like hold the position and not actually take much damage in a sense of holding position because you can peep up when you want because you've got more height than usually most people. If you go four or five, maybe if you do it on a high, high piece of land, say a hill or something, you're not going to take that much fall damage anyway. So there's many clips in this gameplay where I stand still. And the reason I'm standing still is probably because I'm doing something on my computer or on my mobile. I'm also checking around for enemies. I see a guy chucking a grenade over here and I'm like, oh no, we've got to take this guy out. So I fire an RPG and nice little swift RPG going in. Unfortunately, I didn't manage to get the kill. And I think, I don't think I even got hit markers yet. So we're in a bad situation. Situation, but we're doing all right, and we've managed to suppress this guy down a little bit. We're getting some shots off at him now with the scar. Some nice little swift shots going on him. There's been a lot of action in this gameplay that 100% haven't been all of my kills. A lot of them have been stolen, but that's what you get in solo. I probably would have had about 13 to 14 kills by now if all of them weren't being stolen, but unfortunately that does happen, and I think definitely it can be something that can be very frustrating from time to time. But sometimes you just got to put up with it, and you. You just know deep down that you probably would have had more kills than you actually did most of the time in solo. And that's something that can always come in every single gameplay. Like this gameplay possibly could have been a 15 kill gameplay if a lot of them kills would have been killed off earlier. But obviously with other people swooping in and stuff, especially landing in areas like Tilted Towers, you can't do much about that. So with us having the height here, having the bird's eye view, we've got a great advantage. We can see that most of the people are probably going to be in front of us. We've got two people left and here I have eight rockets or nine rockets so i just fired one i'm just trying to get some rebound with the rockets it's something that's quite key with the rocket launcher and something i advise on doing see how i fired the rocket well the previous rocket was fired towards the back wall rather than the front wall the advantage of that having the height is you can get that rocket coming in at the perfect angle to hit the back wall and completely miss the front wall and then it does an explosion inside to do damage to someone in the structure. That's the advantage with having the height over other people. As you can see, he's panicking, he's running around the back of his structure. Now the other player, I'm not 100% sure where he is, and I think he's possibly over there attacking with him. So I'm kind of in a situation now where I'm just suppressing with the scar. I got some decent hit there with the scar and they're all right. 
they're not they're too much. It's only a purple scar, 35 damage. It's pretty good. So we're doing pretty well, and we see the storms moving. Now, with the storm moving, you want to always have your resources on the go. You want to be able to build in case someone suppresses you with rockets. You want to be able to build around, move around the map very quickly, and stairs at the idea of doing that. Now, the way I'm doing building in this isn't the way I just currently build. I do have a video on building tips and tricks, which I would recommend checking out if you're wanting to know how to build better and how to build faster and different structures. Here, I'm just doing some edits really quickly to try and get out with the storm coming with the st with knowing that the storm's going to do a high dps maybe even 10 per second i didn't want to get hit by the storm there so i see a player here suppressing me i was very lucky to survive all of his bullets by building unfortunately he didn't manage to hit me with any of his shots i'm not too sure exactly what he was doing and i managed to get two shots or three shots at him nicely there and get the kill now i take damage again i think it was from the same guy and here i follow my same step as before drinking the small potions knowing that they are probably the best way of regenerating health a lot easier than taking maybe a med kit or bandages or a big potion because small potions are obviously consumed in less time than everything currently in the game so that's why i went for them and now it's a 1v1 with me having about a four tall or three tall story i don't know exactly i can't remember i think it's about three or going up to four now uh, so we've got a good height now the enemy is most likely going to have to build up to me to be able to get to me and knowing that he's possibly going to be building up from any angle is quite nervous so i'm consistently checking around and possibly you could put spikes on the back of this in case he jumps in but usually most of them don't jump in they'll build above your height and shoot at you now in this situation the guy doesn't actually do that he actually builds to the same height of my building and has to jump in the advantage of that is i can get a nice swift rocket off like i did i listened carefully when he was building i got a swift rocket out to destroy it so he didn't manage to jump in I could have easily put spikes behind me as well, so he took spike damage. He didn't manage to jump in, he managed to run all the way up. He took the rocket damage, and then I knew he was going to be on low health, so I reloaded my rocket as quick as it would reload, and shoot it straight. I shot it straight down, because obviously he'd already taken damage, he was falling. When he was falling, my rocket was reloading. By the time he got to the ground, I knew there was possibly maybe a 10% chance of him escaping that, and me getting the kill nice and swiftly. So, what an awesome gameplay that was. I possibly could have got a lot more kills but unfortunately that's the way the game ended i hope you guys have enjoyed today's tips and tricks on how to win every single time this really does help for tilted towers and i think i'll be watching this video back myself a few times like i've done with my previous ones if you haven't already go and check out some of the videos on screen right now some of them are really awesome some building tips and stuff that really can help you guys out become a better Fortnite player. So don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, especially if you're new around here. It really does support the channel and we're so close to 50,000 subscribers. I know we can hit it if we work together. So I hope you have enjoyed and once again, this is Postbots Part, signing out.